Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Okay, so uh, now we know uh, how to form precipitates. What are the different steps we have to take to form precipitates, right? Uh, one is solution treatment followed by aging, uh, quenching and then aging, right? And then you're going to form precipitates, right? So during aging, I already mentioned that you heat it to a certain temperature, uh, say T2, and then you leave it there for sufficient amount of time so that beta phase can come out from the matrix okay and then that will lead to a strengthening okay so now depending upon the time right so with respect to time the characteristics of the precipitate also changes so we are going to discuss about that particular concept now okay so during aging the characteristic of precipitates change with aging time. Okay. And to understand this, let us take a classical example of aluminum 4% copper. So I have already mentioned that aluminum copper system uh, will give you precipitation strengthening, right? So we are talking about aluminum 4% copper, okay? So we'll use this uh, uh, particular system so uh, when we ace this uh, aluminum 4% copper alloy, it is going, it will go through a sequence of precipitation and that precipitation sequence will be given by So precipitation sequence will be alpha. So that is your supersaturated salt solution. So this is like supersaturated salt solution. So let's call it alpha SSS, right? So you are going to heat it to a temperature T2 and then beta will come out, right? But it will come out in aluminum 4% proper, there will be a sequence for precipitation and that sequence will be, it will start with the formation of something called GP zones then it will form theta double dash precipitate, then theta dash, and finally it will come to theta, which is equilibrium precipitates, precipitate. Okay, so in this particular system, it is uh, the uh, equilibrium precipitate, like there we discussed about beta in aluminum copper system, it will be theta. Okay, Al2Cu. So it doesn't directly form theta precipitate. It goes through a sequence of precipitation. So it starts forming GP zones, which are clusters of copper atoms in aluminum matrix. Okay, and the shape is typically disc type. Then it goes to uh, theta double prime, then theta prime and theta. Okay, so there is a precipitation sequence in aluminum 4-8% proper if you age it. Okay. And this happens with time, okay? This set sequence uh, 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 occurs with time. So what happens during this aging time, with respect to aging time, a uh, few things will happen, okay? And the first is the size of the precipitate increases okay so as you increase the time 
okay your size of the precipitate is going to increase okay now the second since you are increasing the size of the precipitate your distance between the particles is also going to change but it first decreases and then increases okay because uh, when you start you have to uh, the volume fraction is slightly lower and subsequently the volume fraction is going to be increasing okay so the distance between the particles is going to first decrease and then with respect to time it is going to increase So distance between the precipitate, it also changes, right? So eventually it is going to increase with respect to time, okay? And the last one is the interface between precipitate and matrix will also change. Okay. And this is happening with respect to aging time. Okay. So with aging time, so these are the characteristics of your precipitates that will change with aging time. And what do you mean by interface? Suppose you have a precipitate in the matrix. So I'm talking about this particular interface. Okay, so I'll talk about it. Okay, and why we are talking about it? Again, uh, I'm reiterating because of these changes, right? The interaction, the nature of interaction of, with the precipitate of the dislocation is going to change. And that will lead, lead to change in the strength of the material. That's why we are discussing this particular concept. Okay. So here I have shown uh, the precipitates in a aluminum alloy system and you can see with respect to aging time. So your time is in this direction. Okay. And all these are your TEM images, transmission electron microscopy images. Okay. And if you see the scale bar here, so this is 50 nanometer this is 0.5 and this is also 0.5 right so you can clearly see that the precipitates here so all these small particles right all these small particles these are your precipitates we have discussed this right so the size of the precipitates that is increasing and the distance also increasing so you can see if i talk about this particular thing the distance is this much but here your distance is pretty large right so the size of the precipitates increases as well as distance between the precipitates increases with aging time. And that is what you clearly see here. Okay, so that is one of the uh, uh, changes uh, you're going to observe on in the precipitates with aging time. Okay, now the next is interface, right? So interface, Okay, so there are different type of uh, interfaces. Whenever we talk about two um, phases, you can have coherent or semi-coherent or incoherent uh, uh, interfaces between the two phases, okay? So what are these? So let's talk about that because that is also going to affect the nature of interaction between the dislocation and the precipitate, okay? So the first one is say you have, uh, Say this is your precipitate. So these are your say. So this should be equal. Okay, the distance between these should be equal. And say you have atoms here. Okay, something like this. So all these places I am having atoms. So this is a rough schematic. 
so there will be slightly so, you know, some mistakes but try to understand the concept here okay so this is your precipitate and my interface is here so this is your interface right okay now uh, we are going to have uh, okay so uh, let's change this because this becomes easier so let me call this as uh, matrix because i am going to change the uh, spacing between the interfaces uh, precipitated okay so now let's uh, we are talking about the torrent one take blue okay so if the interface between the precipitate and the matrix is perfectly torrent then there will be one to one matching okay so you are going to have a situation like this again these are rough uh, drawing okay so you have precipitates atoms in the precipitates like this something like this so you are going to have one to one matching here right so this is called if this is the situation then this is called perfectly torrent condition right perfectly torrent this also means that you are going to have one to one correspondence between precipitate lattice and the matrix okay here this is your precipitate so you are going to have one to one matching between the lat precipitate lattice as well as matrix lattice right and if this situation is there this also means there is not going to be any strain because there is one to one match right so no strain okay so you are not going to have any strain so this is called the this situation is a perfectly torrent or this boundary interface is perfectly torrent interface now there will, you are not going to find any two elements which are going to have one to one perfectly one to one correspondence right it is like fingerprints right so each element is going to have different lattice parameters right so you are not going to have this condition uh, anywhere okay so there will be slight difference between the uh, uh, lattice uh, lattice parameters of the precipitate and the matrix right at least some difference will be there right so the second case will be torrent boundary with some strain okay and the situation will be something like this so you have this interface so let me first draw or matrix okay now let me draw for uh, precipitate the lattice for precipitate so it will be something like this
I think these are some rough drawing. Okay. So there is, you, you can see that there is, uh, you are not going to see a perfect match. So two lattice parameters are not going to match, right? So here again, this is your precipitate. This is your matrix. Okay. Now what is going to happen since there is a difference between these two precipitates in, in terms of lattice parameters, right? You're going to have strain associated with it, right? So these two are going to match. Something like this. Okay, so now compare with what you see here, there is a perfectly match uh, condition, right? One to one matching. Here also there is one to one matching between the top and the bottom lattices. But the problem is since the lattice spacing is different, right? There's a difference in the lattice spacing, you're going to have some strain here in this particular region at the interface. Correct? So you are going to have one-to-one -one match. So your surface, your interface is going to be coherent, but there will be some strain associated with it, which you didn't observe in the perfectly coherent case, okay? So this case is coherent interface with strain. Right? So again, you are going to have one to one correspondence. It is not going to be lost. Okay? So you are going to have one to one correspondence. between precipitate lattice and the matrix. Same situation as the perfectly torrent here, right? But now you have strain associated with the interface and this particular strain because of the difference in the lattice parameter of the precipitate and the matrix with we, we call it this particular strain as coherency strain okay so you are going to uh, your interface is going to be coherent but it will be associated with coherency strain, okay? Or sometimes it is also called as elastic coherency strain, okay? So this is also a torrent interface. Now, when the size of the precipitate increases, as we saw just now, okay, with respect to aging time, the interface is also going to change from coherent to semi-coherent, right? So your precipitate size was small and it had some uh, coherency strain. Now, remember coherency strain is going to depend upon the difference in the lattice parameter of these two phases. So if the difference is larger between the lattice parameters of precipitate and matrix, your coherency strain is going to be larger, correct? Okay. Now, after certain uh, time or after say certain uh, size of the precipitate, the precipitates or this alloy system cannot sustain this much of coherency strain. Okay, so there is certain amount of coherency strain which this alloy system can have. Okay, after that, the interface cannot maintain coherency because of the higher amount of strain. Because remember, strain is also going to be associated with strain energy. Okay, so you cannot have large amount of strain energy. So this uh, it, uh, interface is going to change to semi-torrent from torrent interface. Okay, so the third what we are going to talk about is semi-torrent 
इंटरफेस so in this case say you have a interface here okay now let me use the same color so what is going to happen let me draw first the matrix one and in remember these lines are actually associated with atoms okay for better understanding i am drawing this line okay now let me draw the precipitate one so you are going to have this okay and then this then this is here and then you are going to have say this something like this like this this so something like this right and it can continue so this is your precipitate and this is your matrix okay and as usual this is my interface here okay so now see here you have one to one match between these two you have one to one match between these two right but then this die is missing here so this plane there is no match right then you have one to one match here also one to one match here also then again you have match here but again there is a missing one here missing plane then you have one to one match and then one to one match and it goes like this right so what you are doing you are not able to remember this semi torrent interface came into picture because of higher torrency strain right so now to um, Uh, you are going to have here a partial one to one correspondence between the precipitate lattice and the matrix lattice and to take up the strain you are going to form dislocations at the interface so these two here what you see right these are your dislocations isn't it so these two are half planes right so you have these two planes here corresponding to this two correct so you are actually taking up the strain at the interface by forming the dislocations okay so in semi torrent interface the first point will be partial one to one correspondence between the precipitate lattice and matrix lattice okay so you have partial one to one correspondence like here these two are missing right so if i say one and name one and two right so these two are missing planes but rest of them have one to one correspondence okay and that's why we call it semi torrent so some of the planes are matching and the second one is dislocations form at the interface to take up the strain okay so you are not going to have a very high amount of torrency strain in a state you are going to have strains associated with dislocations okay so this is the characteristic of 
semi coherent interface now if you increase the size of the precipitate much more this semi coherent interface is going to change to completely incoherent interface okay so here you are not going to see any correspondence so no one to one correspondence between the precipitate lattice okay and matrix that is so you are not going to have any correspondence so let me draw say this is your interface here so you are going to have say something like this okay and the second one can be say Okay. this is your matrix as is your same color right and then this is your here precipitate so there is no correspondence right between the planes okay so uh, again uh, when you form precipitates right and you uh, give uh, time so with respect to aging time the characteristics of the precipitate changes and what are those characteristics size distance within the precipitate second and the third is the interface between the precipitate and the matrix so uh, with uh, aging time the size of the precipitates increases and as size of the precipitates increases the interface between the precipitate and the matrix changes from coherent to semi coherent to incoherent interface and we are talking about remember the example is aluminum 4% proper there will be other system where the sequence is not there right alpha to gp jones to theta double prime to theta prime to theta it can directly form theta precipitate or equilibrium precipitate but we are talking about a special case of or the classical example of aluminum 4% copper which you are going to find in most of the books so it will it will be also easy to understand for you guys okay so now we have understood the change in characteristics so now what we are going to do we are going to next we are going to try to understand how these changes in the characteristics will affect the interaction between the dislocation and the precipitates okay and thereby you are going to see the changes in the strength of the material also